Good morning all. Well, it's getting near the end of March now and the weather forecast today was very, very good. That was until they revised it this morning and still going to be okay. It's not going to rain or anything, but it's cold. Sun's out at the moment, but it's set to cloud over later. At the moment, it's just three degrees. And because I thought it was going to be nice, I didn't bother plugging in the heated gloves. So I'm wearing the gloves, but no heating. But uh, they're keeping me warm, which is great. Now, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do on today's ride. I'm riding solo today. Wendy would normally be with me, but she's off on one of her mini holidays. I've been riding 50 miles almost on every ride lately. So today I'm thinking probably to push up to about 80. And then when we get some better weather again after that, then I'll look at the 100. Get ready for the summer. This gate you can see ahead is the back door to Beaver Castle make a great ride down there but I guess they wouldn't be too happy One of the reasons I want to do a long ride today as well is to talk to you about these uh, Redshift kitchen sink handlebars. Now I've been using these for about a thousand miles now and unlike other Redshift products where you pretty much see the benefits straight away, although I felt these bars were great when I got them, I wanted to be sure before I reviewed them. Now the big thing is with them, they are 50 centimeters wide and not 50 inches as I mentioned in a previous video. So what I want to do today is go on a fairly long ride and tell you how I feel about the bars afterwards. I've got some nice new tires on today. I was getting a lot of punctures recently. Now bear in mind I was riding on a lot of thorny paths so the tyres had done well but they were getting pretty worn down they'd done 2,000 miles which I think is not bad so I decided I would get some new tyres for the new season so I got the Swelba G1 all rounds again because I was happy with those it didn't have a single puncture all year until just in the past few weeks really. To be honest, I was becoming a little bit disillusioned with tubeless. So, got the new tires on. I've got spare tubes. Got some brand new sealant in there. I've gone over from the stand sealant to the muck off because one of our ride buddies, Ian, suggested the muck off. Unfortunately, that wasn't sealing either. And I, I can only think it was because the tyres were quite worn and therefore weren't able to seal properly. And while we're on the subject of tyres, I'm going to show you something a little bit later on that uh, I've been sent to try. The other thing that hasn't helped my mood lately is the work I do as a local Cycling UK advocate. Trying to deal with local authorities is just 
oh, it's just mind blowing. I really don't know how some of these councillors find themselves elected. I just hope that in the May elections that we have a change because frankly, the people we've got are just not fit for purpose. They make a big thing about being supportive of active travel, but that's where it ends with just words. But I won't give up. And I have to say, it's a case at the moment of no more Mr. Nice Guy. <laughs> the gloves are well and truly off. Some of the local councillors are very, very helpful, but as soon as it gets to the county level, they just throw up obstacles. They don't come along and say, yeah, there's some problems, but we'll help you overcome them. They basically just tell me the problems. Anyways, you didn't come here to listen to me moaning on. So we'll put all these negative people behind us and let's be positive. Now, all being well, I'm going to head up to the Fledborough Viaduct I've already crossed the River Trent once at Newark, but I'll have to cross it again, and that's at Fledborough. And that route's going to take me all the way into Lincoln if I want to, and I'll decide whether to do that or not a bit later. I've settled into the ride quite nicely now, so we'll see how we go. I, but of course, once I get to Fledborough, Really, that's the point of no return, so I've not got much choice then. But it's a lovely day so far. No sign of this cloud coming in that they're talking about. So hopefully it should be very pleasant. Temperatures climbed to a balmy 5 degrees C. Well, well, I'm halfway in now, I'm 40 miles in, and there's no short way back, so it's gonna have to be at least 80. I'm actually now at the Fledborough Viaduct, so it's my second crossing of the Trent. And I'll try and show you it. It's quite a dramatic structure. But uh, yeah, gonna have a little break and then make my way again. There's not much breeze today, it's six miles an hour and it was a northwesterly. But as you probably know, I always try to plan my rides so I go out into wind, so I get a tailwind on the way back. And today I should be traveling back in a southerly direction and the wind is actually veering to a northerly. So it means by the time I go back, I should get a six mile an hour push, which will be nice. Of course, it doesn't always work out. Sometimes, whichever way you go, the wind seems to be in your face. So we'll see. But so far, it's great. It's, it's a beautiful day. Spring is on the way. Still a bit chilly. Now we have an old saying in England, don't cast a clout until May is out. Well, May Blossom is out, but I tell you, it's chilly, so I'm not casting any of my clouts just yet. The only thing I have cast off are my mud guards on the Tempest. The reason being that when I put the new tires on, I took the mud guards off to give them a clean. They got a lot of sealant splashed in them from when I had the punches. And I decided I'd leave them off. If I'm going out and it's really wet, I can easily put them back on again. They're that easy to put on. Or I can use the Ribble, which has mud guards permanently fitted. Right, this is decision time. If I turn off here, the ride is going to be around about the 85 miles. But I think I'm going to press on to Lincoln. The weather's nice, I'm feeling okay. So why not?
That was me pulling into the giant bike shop cafe at Doddington Hall, only to find that they're closed for three days. They're being refurbished. So we'll have to call there another day. But today we'll have to press on and find somewhere else for some lunch. Well, I've stopped for a little rest now. The weather's really good. It's nice and bright. Um, I've now got that slight tailwind that was promised. A uh, couple of things to talk about really while I'm resting. I've had some subscriber questions about electric bike pumps, uh, the type that are portable and that you can take with you. This came up recently on a ride where I punctured with my 38 mil tires and it took me a long time to pump up with my mini pump. I have carried uh, CO2 at times. I find with CO2 that you've really got to carry two cartridges with you, plus your pump, just in case you use those two. Uh, so anyway, I contacted the market leader, a company in Melbourne, Australia called Thumper Pumps. And as any good company should, they asked me the sort of riding I did, what tyres I used and so on. And they recommended a pump and said they'd send one over for me to try. And uh, this is it. This is their mini pump and it's very, very light. And I'm going to tell you more about that in an upcoming episode, which I'll dedicate to this. But certainly first impressions, it's very good. And also, I've been carrying this in the back pocket of my jersey. Um, didn't even notice it. Well, what a glorious day. It's just about perfect. I've got 14 miles to go. I'm on 76 miles now. Uh, feeling it though, my knees are becoming quite painful. But considering it's the first ride of 80 plus after the winter, I'm quite pleased. It certainly augurs well for the summer. And we're going to do some fairly long rides. Wendy wants to get out to Skegness. Now, she might have Terry pick her up and bring her back, but I'll try and persuade her to do both ways. So we're going to be looking at probably around the 140. I remember when she thought 100 was a stretch, but now she can do 100 without really thinking about it. So that's what we'll aim for. Just approaching Carrot Corner here. This is where the carrot had me off uh, luckily it's nice and dry today 
No sign of any vegetables. This road we're on now is known locally as Five Gates Lane. It's quite a recreational area. There's a few car parks, but unbelievably, this road is national speed limit, which means vehicles can do up to 60 miles an hour, as some do. And it's a bit of a rat run. So what we're trying to do is get this reduced to a 30. But again, it's quite hard work dealing with the councils. This is the Woodland Trust car park at London Thought Woods. And you can see the toilet block there that they've rebuilt. And they've rebuilt it because not so long ago, one evening, someone's feral offspring came up here and thought it would be a good idea to burn it down. And if you're in this area on the 15th of April, we're doing a Ride to the Woods event. We're going to have rides up and down from Wyndham Park up to this woods and then back again. So it's not very far, but should be fun and hopefully it will get more people out on bikes. And the emphasis here is on shared path, which is why it was disappointing that some clown decided to make this a Strava segment. <laughs> so if you're walking along here, beware, just in case somebody's trying to get a personal best. I must be getting tired. I realise that I'm moaning again, so apologies for that. But we're going to have a moan now and again. I'm pleased to say that the Woodland Trust are going to have a mural painted on this wall. So that should uh, be quite attractive. I'm really surprised that we haven't had some DIY mural makers so far. Maybe it's too far for them to walk. Well, that ride ended up at just over 90 miles. And I must admit, I felt great when I got back. I was glad I was back. Uh, I did think about pushing it to the 100, but then I thought, well, why, why bother? Um, but it's just as well I didn't because I really felt it for three days afterwards. So I think I really did push it a little bit too far. It was the first long ride uh, after the winter. We've been riding consistently 50 miles at a time, but uh, it just pushed it that bit too far. I really should have gone for about 70, I think. I must admit I was really glad that the weather was rubbish for the next few days because it meant that I didn't have to even think about going out. But anyway, it was a good ride, as you saw, it was lovely weather. I uh, really enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to getting out again soon. But what about these handlebars? As I've said, I've been riding the kitchen sink bars for around a thousand miles. Uh, I felt good on them. Uh, must admit the width felt a little bit weird to start with, but uh, I stuck with it. And I have to say now, if I ride my Ribble that has a standard width bar, then I do find it very strange and quite uncomfortable. And I think part of the reason is that I have a 44 inch chest. Um, I do find that when I'm on normal bars, I'm probably restricting my breathing and so on. I think also width is giving me that extra control when on the loose stuff. And you only have to look at say a 29er mountain bike, it's gonna have a wide handlebar. When I started looking at the kitchen sink handlebar, I wasn't really sure about what width to go to. I had a discussion with Eric at Redshift and he said, well, you know, if you're going up from a standard bar, why don't you go to 47 centimetres? But I thought about it, I thought, well, no, you know, if, we, if we're gonna go wide, let's go wide. Also, the straight bars on my 29er are that width anyway. So I decided to bite the bullet and go for the 50 centimetre. The next decision was whether to go for the loop or non-loop. I don't do bike packing as such, so I didn't really need the wide open space of the non-loop version. I do have my Wahoo head unit out front, 
and that's in the space that the loop would be. As you can see here, I've got my main water bottle mounted on the loop. This is important for me because uh, I'm riding a small frame and with the frame bag fitted, it does make ease of getting at the water bottle quite difficult. So I've got my tools in one holder, a spare bottle in the other, but my main bottle for regular use, I can now have mounted on the bar and still have plenty of room for my hands. Going for the loop meant that I could also have the neat little bag that fits into the loop. This is just big enough to get some snacks in for the ride. There is also a nice sealed compartment inside where you can keep valuables such as money or whatever. So anything you need to keep safe and to hand, you can have in that bag. The other clever little design on this bag is that although you have zips either side, uh, so you can firmly close the thing up, Redshift have used their love of magnets. So they've actually got a magnetic lip on this bag. So it will actually stay closed without the zips done up. So it's very easy if you want to get something on the fly without stopping, then nice and simple. And that bag also holds whatever head unit you're using. You can have adapters for Garmin or Wahoo. If you have the loop, you could still put another bag underneath. But if you were true bike packing, then you'd probably go for the bar without the loop. And of course, because you've got this wide bar, there's a lot more room for a bag. The design of the bar itself is unique in that you've got a 20% rise on the flat portion of the bar. There's a seven degree sweep, 25 degrees of flare at the drops, but also the drops are compact. So you're not actually dropping down a huge amount when you go into the drops. Now, personally, I don't ride in the drops very often, purely because I find it quite uncomfortable. Uh, so I'd only really do it if I was into a headwind or whatever. However, with the compact drops and the specially designed bar grips, it actually makes riding in the drops a real pleasure. And when you combine this unique shape with the compact drop, the drop grips and the top grips, it gives a much wider range of hand positions during the ride. I found this very helpful because I would get normally to about 60, 70 miles and I'd start to get some numbness in the hands. And uh, obviously I would take the hands off the, the bar and you know flap them around a bit to get some sensation back and try and find different places to put my hands. But of course, with the bullet camera fitted, the B scene light, the head unit clamp, it all got a bit busy, so there wasn't a lot of room to put your hands, certainly on the flat part of the bar. With this wider bar and the fact that I've got the loop, it means that I can fit most of the add-ons on the loop and it gives me a much wider area to put my hands and find a decent comfortable position. And I can even put them flat on the top grips and still maintain enough control, but I can stretch my hands out. So they're the pros, but what about the cons? Well, there are a couple that I found. One is that you're highly likely to have to change your cables if you fit this wider bar. I certainly did, but for me that wasn't a problem because on the original Tempest build, I realized that the cables were a little bit too tight. I wasn't happy with them. So it was a good excuse to change them. And of course, we all need to change our cables now and again. So then would be a good time. And the other thing you are a little bit restricted on is bar tape. It's very unlikely that you'll find bar tape that's going to fit that, that width of bar. So I would recommend if you do buy these bars, I would recommend you also buy Redshift's own extra long bar tape. Now, I have to say I'm not an expert at, at taping bars, but I genuinely found this bar tape to be superb to fit. It was really, really nice. It molded into place and it was even long enough that I could tape the loop as well. Although not the cheapest on the market by any means, uh, that bar tape is well worth every penny, I would say. The other downside is that that wide bar means that there will be certain obstacles. You're gonna to need to just pick the front of the bike up and carry them through various barriers. Now we have these odd shaped barriers on some of our canals and footpaths and so on. Um, and it is a little bit tight going through there, if not impossible to get through. So it's just a case of lift the front end up and push the bike through. So how was it after 90 miles? I have to say, before I was using these bars, I had been getting some shoulder pain on the left side. 
Now, I don't think it was anything to do with cycling, but cycling did tend to cause it to flare up. Uh, I haven't had that problem using these bars. I've got this nice wide arm stance, but I can move my hands into the middle of the bar and hold them on the top grips. Uh, I can ride comfortably in the hood. I can get to the brakes conveniently. It feels very, very natural. And as I've said, it feels unnatural now if I'm riding with a standard bar. So I have to conclude that these bars are perfect for me. They fit my physique, they fit my style of riding, they're great that everything's at hand. Now, if you want to buy these, uh, if you buy direct from Redshift, you can benefit from a 15% discount. Uh, I think they'll give you a 10% discount as a new customer anyway, but if you use the link in the description below and use the code that you're seeing on the screen now, then you'll get a 15% discount. So it's worth having. The other thing I like about Redshift is they give their 360 degree guarantee. So if you're not happy with one of their products, you can return it either for a full refund or a replacement. So that's a great safety net there if you're unsure about say the width of the bars that you want and so on. And also, although they're based in Philadelphia, the products are supplied locally. So in the UK, shipping is via Amazon. So I hope you found that interesting. I should be riding again on Monday and uh, meeting up with Wendy. Not sure where we're going yet or how far we're going, but we will record that ride. So hopefully you'll join us for that. So thanks again for joining me and I'll look forward to you joining me again soon.